Hello Internet, my name is Cryptic and I'll be bringing you your gaming news for this week. Uh, the main highlight for today's gaming news is PlayStation State of Play. Um, they announced a bunch of indie games and a couple PS5 games, but it wasn't anything big compared to their last outing last month where they revealed the PlayStation 5 uh, that it had two versions and a whole slew of games. Um, they did announce a few days leading up to this that for most people not to expect anything major in regards to the news. Um, some people did get a bit disappointed even though they knew this beforehand but we'll get to that later. Um, so let's start off with the games that were announced. Um, the first being Crash Bandicoot 4. Um, a bit more detail on it. Uh, it is a direct sequel to Crash Bandicoot 3 which we pretty much knew hence it being Crash Bandicoot 4 it's about time. Um, they did show some new gameplay features showing that you don't only play as Crash, but you also play as Coco and Dingadal, which was interesting. Dingadal was never playable in any of the other games unless you counted the racing spin-offs for Crash Bandicoot, Crash Team Racing, uh, Tag Team Racing, etc. Um, but you can play, I believe, Crash and Coco start to finish. There are segments which do show in the state of play where uh, you'll be playing as Neo Cortex. Um, the la only game I believe he was playable in was Crash Twin Sanity, um, which was on the PlayStation 2, um, but uh, not in any others, again, unless you count the, the racing games. And, of course, Dingadal. Um, they talked about a, a lot about the art style and um, why the changes are there. A lot of the fans of Crash Bandicoot um, were a bit disappointed that they changed it from the original art style. Um, some people also wanted it to be um, in the art style of the remastered games um, that were done for 1, 2, and 3, the Crash Trilogy. Um, but they did make changes, they did explain that, that it's sort of uh, their vision of where they wanted to see uh, the Crash Bandicoot games in the current modern um, state of the platforms and with technology and just showing off the new um, gameplay features where you can grind, um, uh, playing with gravity, um, different weapons depending on the character that you play. If you're playing Dingadal, he's gotten rid of his flamethrower and actually um, has more of like an air cannon gun that sort of blows and sucks boxes. So a few interesting things. Um, Neo Cortex having his uh, iconic uh, laser gun. So they have made a few changes there. Um, but it will come out on October 2nd. So we'll know how good it is when reviews come out then. Um, the second announcement was Hitman 3. Um, we knew this was coming. Obviously, it's a multi-platform game. Always has been. It's not exclusive to PlayStation in any way. But what is, I guess, a console exclusive to PlayStation, as none of the other consoles have VR, is that Hitman 3 is playable in VR. Now, it seems like from the trailer shown that it's playable from start to finish in VR, and will also include other missions um, from Hitman 1 and Hitman 2. Um, which will be added into the PlayStation version for the VR mode where you can do those missions in full VR. Um, from the trailer, the field of view seemed a bit weird, a bit narrow. Um, so I wonder how well that will be playing it instead of third person being in first person. Obviously it'll be a lot more immersive just for that, but also adding VR on top. Um, that would be pretty cool. Um, but yeah, it seems like the FOV in the video seemed a bit narrow, which can cause motion sickness for a few gamers that are used to like an FOV of 90 or more. Especially if you're playing like uh, the Battlefields, Call of Duties, or most first person shooters, you want that wider field of view, especially for gaming for longer periods. And the same would apply for VR, because you can very easily get motion sick in VR games, depending on the motion tracking and the head tracking that they use. But uh, it'll be one of those things that as, as they reveal more, um, they'll show. Um, whether this will come to the PS5, not really sure, but um, it looks like it will be PlayStation 4. But if it is coming out next year, not this year, because um, they are saying it's an early 2020, uh, early 2020, mid 2020 release, so we'll have to wait and see then. Um, the third game that was uh, revealed was Braid Anniversary Edition. Now, if you remember Braid, it was one of those. Uh, breakout indie games. It sort of set a, set the trend for indie games. Um, you know, the 10, 15, 20 dollar budget game um, coming out on PC on Steam and sort of taking the gaming world by storm. You know, this tiny platformer setting the standard for what indie shooting could be. 
Um, so they're doing uh, another version of it now. It's the anniversary edition, which is coming early 2021, which is quite a while away. Um, considering that the game is as it is is done, but it seems like they've re hand drawn all the art assets and all the animations um, for the game, which is probably why it's taking uh, this long. So they've probably just started working on it or have been for at least 12 to 18 months. Um, and they've also added commentary and interviews um, to the game. So you, I believe you can play the game. And if it's like anything where other games that have done interviews and uh, commentary added to like let's say movies or um, games where you get up to certain parts and the developer might explain uh, what was in the design decision of this or the art direction for this and why they went about it and how everything was made. Um, so yeah and they're also talking about adding information about how they did the programming and design so um, they were all selling it in a way that it's a good way if you were to get braids um, anniversary edition it will be a good way to sort of learn about game development and sort of uh, help you step into that area. I don't know how detailed or how accurate that'll be, but we'll find out as it comes out. Uh, the next game that was announced, another indie game called The Pathless. It's an open world, uh, I guess, travel adventure, action adventure. I don't know. A lot of traveling happens. So you play as a female character who's um, a huntress. Um, with a bow, an arrow, and her uh, eagle companion. And basically it seems to be like a puzzle world which you complete with your bow and arrow, um, hitting targets to gain stamina to keep uh, sort of sliding and running for long distances, um, and using your arrow through various target puzzles and other things to unlock secrets and collectibles. And yeah, it seems like just a huge... Um, open world game which was surprising I don't think we heard anything about this before I believe this is the, potentially the first time it was shown um, and it seems like you do these puzzles to eventually get to these bosses and they have puzzle mechanics around them on how to beat them using the bow and arrow as well um, quite interesting um, I'll be honest for me it's probably not my cup of tea but I can see a lot of people who would get interested in a game like this so it seems good um, you can also interact with your eagle companion. Uh, seems like a, a, a wiping mini game or a hand patting mini game where you keep it clean and happy. So there seems to be like a, a maintenance, happiness sort of um, um, sort of mechanic in the game to sort of keep it on your side and uh, to do what you want it to do. So interesting there. Um, another one, Spelunky 2. Uh, this game has been in the works for ages. Um, it was announced. Uh, years back I'm pretty sure or was at least rumored to it and they finally announced that it's coming on the PlayStation 4 on September 15th and it seems like more Spelunky which is not a bad thing at all it's fantastic the first one was amazing um, it was a huge hit um, and yeah I believe the original Spelunky started as a web-based game like a almost like a flash game and then it turned into a more of like a proper dedicated PC and console game um, with more levels and then I think the PC might have had uh, user generated levels through mods and, and, and other tools um, but it's good to see Spelunky 2 finally coming out after a, a long development cycle and yeah it looks like heaps of fun probably something I might pick up um, we had a few more games like Genshin Impact, Aeon Must Die and Anno uh, a few more indie games and others so those are great uh, the next one, a big one, kind of, maybe, from the creators of Octodad, uh, Bug Snacks. Um, when this was revealed on the PlayStation 5, uh, PlayStation 5 um, State of Play, um, didn't really know what was going on visually. It didn't look that impressive until they sort of announced it's from the creators of Octodad, and then it made a whole bunch of sense, um, which fit straight into their sort of art style that they do. Um, they've shown a bit more gameplay now, they show that you're actually playing as a journalist. Um, you seem to have a really cranky boss, um, and you've gone here about the bug snacks and the bug snack monsters and um, all that kind of thing. She thinks you're nuts, but says just don't die, or don't get hurt, or don't go missing when you're out on this, and you better come back with something, or don't bother coming back. So it seems like your job's on the line if you screw up. Um, and they've shown it, it seems like to be a bit of... Um, I don't know if it would be an open world or a hub based 
sort of game. Um, it sh just shows a small town that you can uh, go to um, and with some NPCs walking around the town. Um, not much on the actual gameplay or what you'll be doing, whether you'll be taking photos or you'll be doing a point and click sort of thing or it'll be more of these physics based games like Octodad was which was quite a pain in the ass to control but to create some really funny moments. Um, unless you're going to be doing things where you're going to control the NPCs in the, in the town to um, complete the missions and the stories and sort of eat the bug snacks and then change the body of said NPC to be able to complete the task at hand. It's still a, a bit unsure but um, it's due to come out holiday this year for the PlayStation 5 and, and PS4 and PC so it is a cross-gen game. Um, so I guess we'll see how it goes, whether it gets huge on Twitch and streaming like uh, Octodad did because that had a good, a huge run I think about a year or more of just people streaming that and just doing crazy things there. Um, so yeah, we'll see how that goes. Um, Control announced an Alan Wake DLC. If you're if you're familiar with Alan Wake and you played Control, you'd be happy with that. But it wasn't anything too major. I think that's the second piece of DLC that uh, announced for the game. So there is quite a bit of support. Um, the next thing that was also announced was Auto Chess coming to PlayStation 4 in October. Uh, yay, more chess. Uh, Hood Outlaws and Legends, a medieval game. For PlayStation 5, there wasn't too much gameplay. It seemed to be sort of like a, probably an in-game trailer, um, just showing some knights, you know, combat training and a few other things with some uh, voiceover from potentially uh, the villain or maybe uh, uh, an ally in the game. So there wasn't too much about that, but that seems uh, pretty cool. Another medieval-looking game for PlayStation 5, but that's not launching until 2021, so it's a fair bit bit away, which. Might explain why they didn't show any actual gameplay since they're probably not there yet with their um, current state of how they have everything. Um, another announcement, which was a game that I'm currently playing in um, early access now, Temtem, which is um, I'd say probably the be most or best well received uh, um, Pokemon clone or Pokemon alternative. Um, if you've, if you're not familiar with Temtem, it's essentially a two-on-two -two battle system, um, in, in, in the Pokemon style. Um, so instead of doing a one-on-one, -on -one, all battles are done two-on-two. -two. Um, so the first two creatures, which are referred to as Temtem in the game, um, come out and you battle your, uh, opponents, uh, two. And instead of having, uh, power, uh, move points or power points, to determine how much or how often you can use a particular move before it runs out. It's a based on a stamina system um, for your Thames. So each Thames has its own stamina pool, health pool, and experience bar. And um, each move that you use, the more powerful it is, the more uh, stamina it will use up. And if you overexert your Thames in stamina, it re uh, reduce, you lose some life from that Tem. Um, so that was announced for PlayStation 5 and also the Xbox Series X, but they had it at the um, state of play, obviously, and then later it was announced on their on their forums and blogs that it's also coming to the Xbox Series X, which is interesting because it was originally announced to come out for uh, the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One. But, um, my assumption is they're still releasing on those platforms, but they've also added, obviously, the next-gen consoles when they come out. Um, it'll be probably uh, next year because they've only just... Um, launched the Kiwasa update, which is the new island, the new Thames and battles recently, which was uh, in July. Um, so that's only just come out. Um, the next, there's I think two or three more major updates still to come through. Um, don't quote me on that, I haven't checked in a while through their um, sort of plan or their update plan for the game. So it's a fair ways away. Hopefully they can. They have a large enough team to be able to handle all the different ports for it. The game is pretty pretty amazing right now. Quite stable. Um, the devs are pretty active in uh, fixing bugs and any uh, user specific issues where it's only happening on your particular account on on Temtem. So they'll be they've been able to fix those server side issues as well for the users. So it it is quite good. Um, at the moment, it is discounted on I think Steam and on the Humble Bundle. Um, Humble is the publisher for Temtem, so it might be a game you're interested in if you're looking for a far more challenging game in the in in the Pokemon theme that's uh, two on two. 
um, it'll probably be uh, a game for you. And then finally, the big one, um, uh, sort of a detailed combat overview of Godfall, which is a game published by Gearbox. Um, and it is a loot-based action hack and slash adventure game. Uh, I, like if you're familiar with, I guess, the, the, the Borderlands series, um, it seems like uh, loot like that, but obviously instead of being a first-person shooter, it's a third-person hack and slash, um, which is for the PlayStation 5. Now, quite interestingly, uh, I don't think at any point they ever said it was exclusive to the PlayStation 5, but all the marketing is, so it could be a timed exclusive since it's from a third-party studio. Um, but then again, it could be one of those third-party or exclusives where it, it'll potentially never go on anything else but the PS5. They haven't really elaborated, but it is at least a, a timed exclusive for the PlayStation 5. Um, it seems pretty good. Um, they've gone through the different... Uh, combat attack types um, and a few enemy types, um, the classes as well, and a bit of a background on the lore of the character. Apparently you play a godlike warrior who's able to handle um, all the augments and abilities that they're dishing out uh, where mere mortals couldn't sort of do. Um, and it, it does look interesting. Um, the combat looked a bit stiff, but then again, um, that just could be just the way they sort of demoed it off. Um, it's got that real shiny look to everything, like everything has this like real glossy shiny finish to it, which could potentially be um, them wanting to show off the ray tracing of the next gen hardware on the PS5 um, and just sort of put that on every surface as possible and just give that real ray tracing effect and shiny look to everything. Um, it, it does look fun, it looks like a nice co-op game, probably potentially coming out um, for the launch of the PS5. Um, I don't think they ever suggested it will be a launch window but actually on the launch. So that was the major news for this week um, in gaming. The biggest thing being of course the uh, PlayStation um, state of play. Um, a bunch of games announced. Again a whole load of, a whole load of uh, people were still mad that they didn't get a release date for the PlayStation 5 console or a, a price point. Um, though speaking of which uh, the PlayStation 5 was leaked early in the week on a French retailer's website, I'm pretty sure, and it was showing that it was for the all digital version, the discless version being $399 US, and for the one with the Blu ray disc um, as part of the PS5 is for $499, um, which would be interesting if that turns out to be true. That would be a lot cheaper than what people had anticipated. I think most people would guess in between. Four ninety nine and five ninety nine, and in some cases five ninety nine to six ninety nine, depending on what version you got. Just because of how advanced some of the tech is in in the PlayStation Five and the Xbox Series X, but um, it seems like it, it's going to be cheaper than what people think, and that potentially Sony might be taking a loss on the consoles themselves, which would be a good thing because they want to get as many people um, onto them as possible. Um, and transitioning from the PlayStation 4 to the 5 um, and it is surprising seeing a lot of people angry that you know they, there is more news and more games coming out for the PlayStation 4 um, I believe there was an IGN article earlier this uh, from a couple days ago that announced that the PlayStation 4 had uh, sold 112 million units um, that is massive that is currently got it at the uh, third highest home console of all time but fourth highest uh, console when relating to having handheld as well. Um, I think the Game Boy Color outbeats it at 118 million. And of course, the highest selling console was the PlayStation 2, um, which nothing really comes close to it at the moment for sales. So it looks like the PS4 might get on track to beating at least the Game Boy Color. Um, I don't think it'll get any higher than that, especially once the PlayStation 5 launches, everyone will be focused on wanting to get that one. But in saying that, 112 units, that is a lot of, that, that is a huge customer base that you don't want to upset by dropping support for uh, the console just because a new version's come out. If you think about it, the PlayStation 3 sold about 86, 89 million, roughly, for its lifetime, and that was still supported three to three plus years um, after the PS4 sort of launch until they ceased production, ceased any games being made for it, etc. Um, so you should at least expect the same for the PlayStation 4 and pretty much the history of Sony is that they've always supported the outgoing console for, for at least two to three years 
um, before you know completely abandoning abandoning the unit and then focusing solely on the on the on the on the newest platform. So I don't see any reason why they would do any different now with the PlayStation 4 going to PlayStation 5. And it just shows that sometimes no matter how much of a heads up you give people, people are still going to complain anyway. Um, so yeah guys, that's the gaming news for this week. Um, I'll try to make a video once a week, see how that goes at the moment with schedule and everything. Um, but any feedback you might have, uh, please leave them in the comment section below. Um, again, first video, hoping to do this for a while um, and just want to get better at it. Um, if there's any uh, things you'd like me to talk about, bring up, uh, video suggestions, anything at all, leave them with the feedback as well down below. Um, all the articles showing the um, games announced in the State of Play will be linked below uh, also to the State of Play video. You can find that in the description below. And um, if you want to hit that uh, subscribe button, that would be amazing. Get a few followers going. And um, if you like the video, hit a thumbs up. If you dislike the video, you can hit the thumbs down. Um, all feedback is welcome. Um, just want to get better at this um, with every video that, that I do. So yeah, thank you for watching and have a good one.